Hey everyone, it's been a minute since my last Touch Designer video and I'm back with a short one. It's a tip, it's something that I bumped into while working on a project recently and I thought maybe it's a common scenario, maybe other people also bump into it and I found a solution and I thought it would be worth sharing. It's about when you need a transition between multiple points or multiple indices. When you need something to transition from A to B, it's quite straightforward. But when it's A, B, C, D or more, it requires a bit more of a setup. I'll show you how to build that setup in the video, but first let me explain the problem a bit better. Say we have two images and we want to crossfade between them. That's very easy to do, we just need a crosstop. The first input is 0 and the second input is 1 and everything in between is the transition. If that's all you need, job done. Now say you have 3 or more images, in this case I have 4. We can't use a cross stop anymore because it only takes 2 inputs, but we can use a switch top and toggle blend between inputs. Now we can transition from A to B to C to D and back. If the indices are always going from 0 to the end and back like this, then this is all you need. But there are other scenarios where this isn't enough. I'm going to switch to a separate base where I prepared a scene with some UI that will help me explain things better. Here I have that same scenario with a chop with indices that zigzag between 0 and 3. They're referenced in a switch which is connected to the same four images. The indices are integers, so we have a dry cut between the images. In order to get a transition, we need to delay the signal either with a lag chop or with a filter chop. In this case, I'm using a filter chop with a length of one second. This works just fine and we see the images crossfading nicely. Now say we want to loop back to zero once the index gets to three, behaving more like a ramp. Now we start seeing the problem. Any transition between three and zero goes through two and one first and the fade doesn't look very nice. I've seen in a forum someone suggesting that you could just repeat the first image and put that at the end of the sequence, but that's still a limited solution. I have another scenario here with 2D quadrants where the indices would follow this pointer here moving in a circle. 0 and 1 at the top, 2 and 3 at the bottom. The pointer goes from 0 to 1, then 1 to 3, then 3 to 2, and then 2 to 0. So that means there are two moments where it skips an index in between. And we see that during the crossfade. There are two moments where there's a ghost of another image in the transition. And that's not only with linear ramps or circles. The idea is that these indices could come from anywhere, in any order. They could be MIDI notes or key presses, or in a more complex scenario, say you're working with media pipe and you're detecting a hand and you want to count how many fingers are shown to the camera. There's no way to predict the sequence. In order to represent that, I have one last scenario with a chaotic motion. The pointer can jump from any quadrant to any other quadrant. You can see the transitions don't really work very well. The crossfade is broken. Now here's the solution I found. I'll go back to that zigzag scenario first and then connect this. This still works fine. Now let's switch to the ramp scenario where we go straight back to zero after three and we can see the last image fading into the first image nicely. And the same goes for the clockwise motion. We can see that sometimes an index is skipped but the crossfade goes from the current image to the next image correctly. 
and with the chaotic motion again the crossfade is stable we skip any chaos that might happen in between inches now let me show you the solution in isolation the key is to always think in terms of a current and a next image or a current and a next index because this works also for other types of transitions so starting from the same four images, connect them all to a switch top and call it switch cur for current. Then copy and paste that switch and rename it to switch next. Then drop a cross top and the first input is current and the second input is next. What's going to drive the cross parameter is a timer chop which we're first going to connect to a null and then reference it here. Then we need a chop which holds our live index or the index that's changing over time. And to that we need to connect a chop execute dot. This is where we write a bit of logic and it's only three lines of code we only need the onValueChange function. And here we write, if optimer1 ready is equal to one, then we set the index parameter of op switch next to the value that just changed. And also we start the timer with start pulse. Now I'm going to change the length of the timer to one second, reinitialize it, and under on done, I'm going to set it to reinitialize. This means that when the timer is done, or when the value of timer fraction reaches one, it goes back to zero. Now just one more line of code and we're done. In the COBEX dat of the timer chop, under the on done function, we need to set the index of switch cur to the index of switch next. And there we have it. Now when the index changes, we define what our next index is going to be and start the transition. When the transition is done, next becomes current and we're ready to transition again. Anything that might have happened while we were transitioning is ignored, so the transition doesn't get interrupted. Another advantage of this is that we have a finer control of the transition. We can drop a lookup chop and an S curve and adjust the steepness or the bias until we're happy with the motion. And that's it. It's quite a simple setup. Hope it's useful. You can also use it to crossfade between audio inputs. I also did that in a recent project and it worked quite well. What I showed you in the video is quite easy to recreate, but if you're interested in the file, it's available on my Patreon. I'm starting a Patreon now, so let's see how that's going to go. You might also be interested in the other base that I showed you earlier with the UI. It's all in the project file. So if you want to support my work and become my Patreon, I appreciate it. Otherwise, that's it for now. See you in the next video.